have uh, for discussion topic today uh, basically one item fiscal year 2010 which I will be uh, asking Mr. Kennedy to off on but before I do that I wanted to raise a question with my committee members about the possibility of suggesting to council that we put a temporary hold on at least general funded capital projects for a period of time say six months until we see how the uh, revenues um, sort out in the new year and I, um, I don't expect any actions today or um, necessarily a response from Mr. Pearson although if you would want to react to that please do. Um, good afternoon uh, Mr. Chair members of the committee Bob Pearson finance director and um, um, Councilmember Horton, as you correctly point out, the um, item on today is actually it's the six-year capital improvement plan, um, uh, which we do every two years. And of course, that does indeed, as you point out, uh, contain the recommended capital projects for all city operating funds um, for fiscal year 2010. And those capital projects that are in the recommended 2010 budget are also, of course, included in your uh, recommended budget document as well as of course being in the six-year CIP um, and I think I'm going to sort of defer to responding to your question for the moment um, other than to say that um, obviously um, the bulk of the general funds capital program that's recommended for 2010 is funded from current general fund revenues meaning it's it's out of operating revenues that we project to be generated next fiscal year there are two projects, I believe, that um, include uh, a component of grant funding. Um, and so we would have to look at those um, and see whether postponing those projects might jeopardize any substantial grant funding that we would be looking at, at getting. And I know, Mr. Horton, you mentioned that to me before the meeting, that certainly we don't want to jeopardize any grant funding um, that um, we might be eligible for. Um, so I think we will certainly look at that and, and get back to you. I'm not sure that, you know, we'd like to look at it on a project by project okay. basis. I think that's that's all I was asking for today. Um, I know that there may be some one time money uh, coming that we, we might possibly lose if we don't use it. I don't think anybody would want us to see mm -hmm. us do that. But on uh, projects that could be deferred while we wait to see what the revenue projections look like, that might be something to think about. Uh, did somebody else want to comment on that? Mr. Chair, just I, I'd like to um, lend your idea some, uh, some support in that I think that we need to carefully look at uh, these projects, as Mr. Pearson said, almost project by project and see what the circumstances are surrounding e each one of them. And the ones that aren't necessary to go forward for the next six months or so uh, until we have a better idea of where the economy actually is going in the next you know, six, nine months, um, I would be very supportive of putting certain things on, on hold, but I can't enumerate them now. And uh, as you said, Mr. Pearson, there are um, other circumstances involved that, you know, grant monies and so forth that we don't want to stall. But I, I think it's an excellent idea, and I'd be supportive uh, of, of you in that way. Okay. Enough on that. Let's... <laughs> Let's hear the report. Okay, let's just proceed then, Bob. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to turn the presentation over to uh, Christine Anderson, Public Works Director, who um, will lead us through the six year CIP. Thank you, Bob. Um, Mr. Chair, members of the Finance Committee, uh, we're here to g give you an overview of the capital program, including the six year CIP and a focus on the fiscal year 2010 capital program. The um, City of Santa Barbara Capital Improvement Program is a requirement of the City Charter and it provides an outline of um, what the purpose of the CIP is intended to include, um, a general summary of its contents, a list of all the capital improvement projects that are proposed to be undertaken during a five-year fiscal uh, year period of time under the Charter, but we have uh, traditionally gone for a six-year period of um, a forecasted CIP the cost estimates and methods of financing and recommended time schedules for when those um, improvement projects may occur and an estimated annual cost of the operating and maintenance of facilities to be constructed or acquired. The goals for the CIP are to provide a balanced program for capital improvements 
given anticipated funding revenues over the six-year planning period and to identify unmet capital needs based on those anticipated funding levels and the shortfalls that may exist. Also, we're trying to provide a plan for capital improvements that can be used for preparing the capital budget for each of the um, fiscal years. Um, and in this particular situation, we're focused on 2010, the first year of the program. The capital project definition that's traditionally used is a capital project that creates, improves, replaces, repairs, or maintains a fixed asset with a total cost of $100,000 or greater and with a life expectancy of more than five years. There can be some exceptions to this definition. I'd say in some instances we may um, include development plans that support identification of needed capital programs. Um, we um, uh, generally look to this kind of a, um, a criteria when we're identifying projects, but we may also have projects that are less than 100,000 in some instances. The CIP project selection criteria um, consider mandated projects that fall under uh, conditions for grants that may be available, legal requirements that may be part of either regulatory um, uh, impositions or um, contract provisions that we've entered into, or they could be part of an adopted mitigation measure for um, some activity the city's undertaken. Uh, we also look for projects that address immediate risks or liabilities, and projects that if deferred would result in a significantly higher cost later or that are now causing deterioration of services. For example, if we had building um, problems with roofs or HVAC systems, those could um, limit the ability of being able to use those facilities for a period of time. So planning in advance for how those can be replaced and repaired is um, important in terms of the impact to operations. We also look at projects identified as a policy directive. Um, energy and sustainability projects, for example, would fall in that category. And then finally, normal maintenance and replacement projects that will maintain the levels of service and protect, protect existing capital investment those are the planned rehabilitation projects that help us to achieve the full useful life of our uh, asset pool. So what's new this year? Uh, the city's revenue sources are obviously um, an impact for the ability to plan and effectively predict uh, our capital improvement financing for especially a six-year period, let alone the first year. We also had the Infrastructure Financing Task Force report that was presented to uh, the City Council back in October of 2008, and the Federal American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, uh, known as ARRA. Um, the downturn in projected revenues, um, for example, parking measures D and uh, forecasted measure A, uh, many of the general fund sources that support infrastructure um, have created some uncertainty along with the transfers that come through the state um, uh, and some uncertainty about timing for those, for example, Prop 1B monies. Um, also, uh, just to recall that part of the general fund uh, proposed budget strategy for fiscal year 2010 includes a reduction in the anticipated capital uh, general fund capital funding by almost $800,000. So, Looking at the Infrastructure Financing Task Force recommendations, um, we are uh, attempting to make the CIP a more useful tool. Some of the recommendations coming out of the task force included um, uh, ways to structure the document and organize it so it could be more effectively used. We're looking at asset inventory and assessment information and clear pr criteria for project priorita prioritization and a distinction between funded and future funding requirements. Um, and we're moving to include and incorporate those in the document and intend that um, that will continue to be a focus as we uh, prepare for our next CIP update. Um, there are also recommendations for fee increases, which are definitely part of the budget process we're engaged in uh, for 2010 and um, recommendations to consider realignment of department responsibilities, particularly along the waterfront, which are also um, in part of the proposed budget for 2010. And also the increased efficiency of operations that were recommended from that report. Chris, before you move on. Yes. Um, I've talked to a number of the uh, 
uh, citizens in the community that helped us with this report. And I think everybody understands the, the uh, critical uh, financial situation that this city is in, in fact, all cities. However, um, the basic uh, principles of that report really deal with um, better planning for capital right. needs in the city. And uh, I don't want us to use the fact that we are in a, in a uh, period of time which certainly is difficult, but I think we'll get through it. I'd like, I'd like for us to use this time to put in place the principles that were uh, delineated in that report so that when we do get better times, we're ready to roll. So from, from my perspective, I want us to keep moving forward with that. And I know that, that we won't be able to implement everything at this point. In fact, a committee member just walked in. <laughs> and um, I hope that uh, at least by the time that I'm off this finance committee that we have um, the principles well locked in so the city is prepared in the future. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, that was one of the things that we, we actually um, feel a foundation is certainly in place and, and the plan to improve in the directions that um, were re recommended out of the task force, I think were um, uh, very solidly found. Uh, the thing that's interesting, uh, going, going through the recommendations, how many of those actually became part of the proposed 2010 budget? Maybe not for reasons that um, were intended originally by the infrastructure task force, but certainly given the circumstances the increased efficiency of operations was something that all departments have had to um, undertake as part of the response to the budget uh, yeah. conditions. And I think we've done it in a way that um, has attempted to increase the efficiency side y of indeed it. Indeed, that's a, a byproduct of the times mm -hmm. as it were, were uh, we really need to look at these recommendations from the task force, and so I'm glad we're doing that. Mm -hmm. Great. And we will continue to address those uh, recommendations over time. The um, ARRA update, um, I just wanted to give you a bit of a recap on where we stand in terms of funding that has been approved or um, programs that we have applied for funding to uh, hopefully at, at least in part be able to access. Um, there are several program areas that um, have been identified. Um, we are hopeful that the ability to access ARRA funds will help offset um, in part the revenue decline that we've seen in some of the areas for capital improvement program. But the um, interesting dilemma is going to be the project eligibility criteria that drives uh, priorities to be able to achieve these um, funding uh, uh, opportunities. In large part, they seem to be focused on infrastructure repair, energy efficiency, programs that are very consistent with the basis for our capital improvement programming. So we feel we're in pretty good alignment in being able to um, have good projects that are uh, community priorities that also meet the criteria for ARRA funds in many instances. Looking at the streets program, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that slide, unfortunately. Um, this represents the allocation of uh, funding that w has been made available for street improvement projects. Um, that money is in hand. Um, SBCAG is the vehicle for uh, transportation financed um, ARRA monies to be uh, disseminated to local agencies. And at their last meeting in April, um, the allocation distribution for local agencies was approved. So we now have that um, funding uh, intact and are actively um, uh, obligating those funds to pavement improvement projects, sidewalk uh, repair and infill projects, um, ADA ramps, and traffic control um, improvements throughout the city. So um, the obligation schedule to be able to access those funds is fairly tight. Um, we are also positioning ourselves to not only be sure that we have um, obligated all of the funds that are available to the City of Santa Barbara, but also in the um, chance that some of the other local agencies um, in SBCAG may not be able to meet the deadlines to be able to obligate those funds if we um, have the opportunity to step up and take on a larger share of those dollars, we certainly want to be positioned to be able to help support that. Otherwise, the money goes back and Are away you, from us. Are um, you staffed in a, in a way, or, or can you reallocate staff so that you have enough folks to be able to apply for these funds and, 
make sure that we get the necessary paperwork together. Yes, this has definitely been a priority program for us. John Awaziak in our um, engineering division has been the lead on this program and is staying very close to it. Um, I don't know whether you're going to tell us, but what, do you have a rough idea of the total amount that might be involved here for the city? If I can read it. Um, three, yes. I know. There's 1.4 in hand as I read it, and then 3.7 in play. I mean, an additional yeah. 2.3 in and play. And actually, I think I'm going to ask uh, John to come up and speak to that program. Uh, we might as well do that right now, just so you're current with the information. Mr. Chair, John Owasiak, Principal Civil Engineer, Public Works Department. Yes, at the um, SBCAG board meeting, the second allotment of the funds, the first allotment was $1.4 million in February, and the second allotment was approved. And so those funds are virtually in hand. W the money has to be obligated. There's an SBCAG deadline of October 15th to obligate these funds, or they will go back to the SBCAG region for redistribution, and that's why um, uh, Chris has been saying that we not only are in a position where we can deliver our, our current funding allotment, but we want to be in first in line for any available funding from either our region or from the state because there's a second deadline, a federal deadline in February 2010, where if, um, if the money not used in the region or in the state gets redistributed and we want to be first in line for available funding. So with the uh, requirements for environmental clearance, for projects that limited the number of projects that we have. So this project list is focused on uh, infrastructure maintenance, and uh, we believe that we are in a good position to deliver these projects in a timely manner, and that's that's the intent of the money is to get it out to the public, uh, to the um, uh, stimulate the economy in a quick turnaround time. So we're doing our part to, to ensure that that happens. Are most of these projects uh, going to entail uh, going through a contract process uh, review and letting contracts and competitive bidding and the, the, the entire system that we're used to? Mr. Chair, yes, we intend to go through the city's uh, conventional process for bidding and awarding the work. And as you'll see, um, these are definitely higher priority projects. The um, ability to um, improve the uh, basic overlay program and the condition of our streets has is, is been a uh, long-standing priority for the city. The traffic signal upgrades um, will provide an opportunity for us to bring in more of the traffic count countdown ped heads that have been, uh, I think, a real asset for um, public safety as, as pedestrians can make better choices about how to use the um, signalized traffic signal uh, for crossings. Um, and also the access ramps. Um, that's an area coming out of the um, ACTS committee that uh, we wanted to prioritize for improvement, and this has given us a shot in the arm on being able to add to the ramp installations for the coming year. So uh, they're good projects and ones that will help throughout the city. <coughs> question? I just have a question on the um, access ramps. There was some discussion several years ago about <coughs> what design was best suited it seems like you've landed on on one because I see that more often throughout the city than the other. But the question that I have is going forward, not just because we're going to cut an access ramp doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be accompanied by a bulb out. That's correct. Even on arteries. Oh well, and, and actually none of these would would include bulb outs. They would be um, basically. Oh, you've made my day. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, and we'll move on. I, we can go ahead and move on unless you have other questions for John. Um, the motor, motor pool um, also has an opportunity for application for ARRA funding. Um, we have applications in for um, the Clean Cities Grant Program and EPA, which would help support the costs associated with vehicle replacements where we intend to use hybrid vehicles and um, also one of our lift vehicles that um, would allow us to fully fund the additional costs associated with a hybrid for that type of a, of a vehicle. So um, we're hopeful. Uh, question, Chris. Yes. Just to be clear, it, the funding is to offset the differentiation in costs, so we, so the, we would still have to purchase the cost of a, a non-hybrid vehicle, and this would supplement that in order to purchase the hybrid. Is, is that what you mean as opposed to? 
full funding for a hybrid vehicle. Uh, that's correct. Okay. Um, the the um, differential would not be the full differential between a standard sedan, for example, and a hybrid vehicle, but um, it would be about $2,000 per vehicle okay. that would assist, in, and we are looking at vehicles that we would have intended to purchase um, as a part of the replacement uh, pool, not new purchase of vehicles that were not already part of the fleet uh, and intended for replacement. So um, we're hopeful that we'll receive some grant support for these, but we don't have any assurance at this point. Um, the other programs that we're um, looking for possible funding uh, are energy conservation. We have a grant for energy efficiency projects uh, to the tune of uh, about $868,000, and we would use our building renewal program as the focus for where those projects could be implemented. Um, there's also a potential funding source for uh, residential energy programs through the community revitalization um, effort with CDBG funds. Um, also, we have um, anticipated um, funding through the Army Corps of Engineers for the Lower Mission Creek project um, to the tune of $600,000. Um, we believe that is uh, going to be approved, but once again, that hasn't been fully authorized. Um, water conservation programs, we continue to track, but so far the Bureau of Reclamation programs um, that are out there seem to be targeted at rural areas and large municipal water systems, so we haven't <coughs> met the criteria for those um, programs as yet, but we continue to monitor them. In water quality improvement programs, um, we have um, a pending application for uh, state revolving um, loan funds uh, that will be coming to council um, for authorization for us to make that application, and uh, also um, in uh, our creeks program. So on, on top of the 3.8 mm -hmm. that we already talked about, roughly how much more is, is in this? You didn't have dollars associated and with this. That's because we don't really know at this point because no money has actually been allocated. Um, the, the range of funding is generally between about two hundred to $800,000 for some of these programs, but we just don't have any assurance as yet that we are going to see any additional money in these categories. We're hopeful. But um, the streets are the only ones that we actually have approval. Mr. Chair, just briefly, um, I think that uh, one of the things that uh, Christine is basing that on is, for instance, when the governor came to the League of California Cities, whenever I was there 10 days ago, um, his secondary focus besides the bond measures and the budget that he has going, his, his primary focus and the primary focus of the legislature beyond the budget is uh, water conservation, water retention, uh, fixing the various different transmission and infrastructure systems that are water in California. And so there's an awful lot out there that is needs to be done, and I don't think we're going to hit the radar, personally. Yeah, stiff competition. Um, the, the summary of the six-year CIP um, totals about Five hundred and forty-seven million eight hundred and sixty-four thousand eight hundred and forty-nine dollars. Um, that's that's it. Um, of that, we anticipate funding for projects totaling about one hundred and ninety-two million, a little over one hundred ninety-two million, and that leaves a total of unfunded projects, um, a little over three hundred and fifty-five million in the six-year projected plan. Looking at the capital budget for fiscal year uh, 2010 that's uh, been proposed. Um, there are a variety of funding sources that are categorized as general funds, special revenue funds, grants, enterprise funds, and internal service funds. The total is just under $30 million. Um, as you can see from the pie chart, uh, the general fund portion is the smallest. So it's, it represents about 3 percent, and that's uh, once again, with the reduction strategy um, as the proposed budget was put together that reduced the uh, previously uh, projected general fund capital budget um, by about $800,000. So we're left with right around a million dollars right now in the general fund uh, capital program. Um, the bulk of it is enterprise funds and special revenue funds that um, have a dedicated purpose. So um, walking through the remainder, 
Um, we have members of the uh, departments representing um, the different capital program needs in the fiscal year 2010 budget if you have specific questions. Otherwise, we'll just quickly go through those and you can come back if there are questions about specific areas. The library has a six-year CIP um, identified need of just about $3 million. In fiscal year 2010, there are capital uh, improvement projects totaling about 334 thousand. Um, those are primarily funded through the trust funds that are um, uh, available to the library only. Parks and Recreation. Uh, just one second on that. Yes. Is the uh, Junior League project included in that amount? Um, those are the East Side um, Adult and Teen Center area of the East uh, Side Branch Library and the Central Library Building Reorganization. So I don't believe we are including the... Go ahead. You Come, Sarah. Sarah Rosenblum from the library. <laughs> hey, we're snarling. 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 <laughs> All right, Sarah. <laughs> um, good day, council members. Um, yes, um, it's a little bit complicated. The, the money that we've allocated um, in the coming year for the Central Library building renovations is part of a longer term part of the project with the Junior League. These are the funds that we're putting up for our share of the project that come from um, gift funds and they pull pay primarily for the needed new bathrooms that we're going to put in the lower level. So it's, uh, the, the total children's uh, remodel is more than what you're reflecting. Oh, yes, yes. You're just putting the, the amount that you're going to put forth, and then they will raise money from yes. exterior sources. Somehow. Yes, and they yeah. are in the process of raising money at this point. Great. Thank you. In Parks and Recreation, there was an identified six-year CIP need of uh, $74 million. In the current fiscal year 2010 capital budget, um, there is a projected um, uh, project need of $482,600. Uh, $482, um, most of that is general fund. Could you go over... Just bre I mean, we heard it last night, yes. but I think it's the Mesa Lane steps, Mesa the Shoreline Park... And there's about 145,000 in playground replacement, okay. um, which, as you know, has been reduced from uh, uh, previous identified needs. The Lower Mesa Lane step replacement is about 50,000. Park restroom renovation program is 237,600. Excuse me, 37,600. I'm sorry. And then Shoreline Park safety improvements, another 50,000. In, you bet. In the police department, there's a six-year uh, capital need of $55,056,710. million, That's um, primarily um, looking at the uh, existing PD headquarters building and, and the continued anticipation that something um, substantial needs to happen with that. But the current fiscal year 2010 capital budget has a, a project for... Um, Hundred and eighty-five thousand five hundred and seventy, uh, and that uh, primarily their um, a records management system upgrade that um, is the only project they currently have in the budget. And that was something we approved a number of years. This is just continuing yeah. on, right? We sort of deferred it last year a little bit, or did we? Was that a one-time deferral? I'm trying to remember something um, I did last Mr. Year, Chair, Councilmember Schneider, yes, this is actually a project that we've implemented already, right. and, and this was a kind of a three-year pay-as-you-go right. kind of a deal that we made with the vendor, so this is really a continuation of paying off that which we've already um, so this really is allocated. It's not something we could we put can't, on We can't. This is yeah. not discretionary. And the Public Works General Fund projects are in the facilities program. Um, we identified a six-year need of 7315000 $7, For the fiscal year 2010 capital program, we have 150000 allocated to um, ADA improvements in the city and another $150,000 um, that's allocated to um, uh, facilities repairs and improvements. Um, basically, those are the sustainability projects that support HVAC improvements and um, uh, the energy um, efficiency projects that we're able to include in those upgrades. 
um, administrative services. Um, uh, basically, these are the um, projects that support our in, uh, in information infrastructure. Um, there's a six-year identified need in the CIP of a little over $2 million, and the current year, 2010 uh, capital program includes, um, I believe, one project for 133000 Before you leave that one, I have a question for Mr. Pearson. Yeah. Actually, it's two projects. I'm sorry. Um, GIS project for 100000 and the inf IS infrastructure upgrade for $33,333. So we've been, uh, ever since I first met you, we've been talking about a new um, budget system. And uh, none, none of that is included in this. Is that the case? Um, uh, Council Member Horton, that's correct. And, and actually, it's more than a budget system, as you know. I, uh, it's an entire financial management system. Um, and yes, that's correct. It's not included in here. And frankly, that decision was made um, about six months ago, I think, to postpone that um, for about 15 to 18 months, um, both for budgetary and workload purposes. So as we get out toward uh, 2011, 2010 or 11, that begins to absolutely slot itself that, in there. That's correct. Yeah. So it, it is reflected in the six-year CIP. Uh, the streets capital program, um, we have a six-year CIP need identified at uh, almost $238 million. And in the current fiscal year 2010 capital program, we've identified um, about $3.3 million. Um, those are basically our streets funding um, revenue sources. And that does not include the stimulus That does not money. include the ARRA funding. Okay. But we are seeing um, it's a pretty dynamic program right now, as we just shared with you. So we are just trying to stay as close and flexible as we can to implement whatever. Even though we, we have secured in hand 1.4 million, Correct. that's not that 1.4 is not in this three. It not yet. Not yeah. yet. We just received that information probably two weeks ago for sure at the uh, SBCAG board meeting. And then the Creeks Restoration and Water Quality Improvement Program has a six-year CIP uh, need identified at $19,500,000 in the fiscal year 2010 capital budget. There is um, uh, funding identified for $1.175 million. And that includes uh, one, two, three, four, five projects, um, actually more than that. There are several small projects that are included in that capital program, and um, I believe Cameron is here. Yeah, there you are. Um, if you had any specific questions on those. And then airport operating capital. Um, there are a couple of components. The um, operating um, capital includes in, included in the six-year CIP as a $17 million um, anticipated need, and in the fiscal year 2010 operating budget, we have uh, $650,500 in operating capital and the FAA um, passenger facility charge grants program, $2,507,750. Before you leave that one, mm -hmm. question for the airport. Uh, in, the, uh, in the terminal project, uh, there will of necessity be some construction going on and what is now uh, aircraft parking and things like that. Is there a um, relationship between the terminal project and this program in some way? Are you um, using either terminal funding to help with that or this funding to help the terminal or can you help clarify that a bit? Hazel Dunn, Airport Department. Uh, Councilman Inver Horton, we already have a grant for the ramp and that grant is good for three years. So we've done part of the work, and we'll do the balance of the work when the building's done. So you needed to do uh, work before the construction? Is that right? That's correct. We replaced um, a major section of the, air, uh, the ramp where the new terminal will go. Okay. okay. Thank you. Then the downtown parking fund has a six-year CIP um, need identified at a little over $10 million. In the fiscal year 2010 capital uh, program, we have allocated $1,450,000 um, 
that includes four projects um, for parking lot maintenance, the control uh, revenue control system implementation, and repairs to lot two and um, in circulation improvements to lots four, five, uh, four and five. And then the golf course capital program has a six-year CIP need of 580,000, and in the fiscal year 2010 capital program, we're projecting 303,000 for the golf program. And that's um, their golf course improvement plan projects of 203,000 and some a purchase of power turf equipment for 100,000. In the wastewater fund, we have a six-year capital need of $26,873,344. And in the fiscal year 2010 capital uh, budget, we're anticipating uh, projects totaling $2,811,000. Um, and those are projects that have come out of our um, uh, identified program improvement needs for um, El Estero and um, the collection system. Then the water fund has an identified six-year capital improvement program need of a little over $74 million. In the fiscal year 2010 capital uh, program, we're uh, forecasting capital projects totaling 5283000 Question before you leave that mm -hmm. one uh, about the water fund. Recently in the community, I've been asked uh, three or four times about planning for the uh, desal plant, should we need to reactivate it uh, in view of uh, what might be an upcoming drought situation? Can you? Tell me how that would relate to future planning in this area. Can somebody help me with that? Uh, Rebecca can come on up, but we, we as you know, have um, done a study to determine what it would cost or anticipate to cost to, to reactivate the desal plant, and that is part of our long-range strategic plan for water supply. Rebecca? Rebecca Bjork, uh, Water Resources Manager, uh, Council Member Horton. We are looking at our all of our water supplies in terms of how we manage our water supplies. We always manage them looking at a five-year look ahead. And currently, uh, it's anticipated that if we go into an extended drought in the fifth year of that drought, we would need to use desal. Um, we will be revisiting that again as part of the long-term supply plan. There are a lot of changes in water. The drought in the rest of the state has made things very different than they were when the first plan was developed. And so there are lots of opportunities to look at different ways to develop reliability. So we will be looking at that. What, uh, what I want to make sure that we, um, we do is that we plan far enough ahead because I, I th isn't this a, uh, help me here, a rather significant investment? Uh, you, isn't it the case that you can't just spend a little bit of money to get this thing going? You have to spend uh, 12 million or something like that to turn it operational. So, so it would be a huge impact on our capital program, it, should we need to implement that, right? Council Member Horton, yes, it, it, it's a significant impact, but when you look at our six-year needs, and, and we do anticipate funding those six-year needs, it makes you understand this is just a very expensive program, and the projects and programs that we undertake in water are very expensive, um, and our, our annual budget is um, $35 million. So it, it, in the context of that, it's not as enormous as it sounds by itself, and one of the things that we recently completed was a study to evaluate how much it would cost and how long it would take to do the study. And the main purpose of that was to let us make the decision to turn that thing on at the last possible moment, so we can wait as long as we can before committing the money. Gibraltar Reservoir, um, in terms of the 73 million, is what's part of the plan in here in terms of uh, Siltation or trying to, if you could comment on Gibraltar and the tunnel and what needs are there, the six year plan. Council Member Schneider, at this time, the six year plan does not include any projects for Gibraltar. Um, Gibraltar did experience significant sedimentation. We have an agreement that allows us to use some of the capacity that was lost at Gibraltar in Kachuma. Prior to pursuing any project to do desedimentation or desilting at Gibraltar, we want to find out how effective that agreement is. It may be that that's as effective as having the reservoir, it may be that we really need to pursue the reservoir. And if that's the case, that would not be funded and is not reflected in our needs. Do, do you have a ballpark figure of what it would take? I not to even mention the permitting process of dredging that 
nothing in where it would go, but um, but it, that would be a gigantic ticket item, I would think. Yeah, it as is well. huge, and I ha I really have no no ballpark for it. Okay. We really haven't gotten far enough along for that. Thank you. And finally, the waterfront fund uh, has a six-year CIP identified need of about $13 million in, in fiscal year 2010 capital projects totaling $1.1. Um, and the Marina One project is also um, one that um, I know uh, Waterfront is here if um, there yeah, are any questions. Yeah, we do have a Waterfront question. We have a Waterfront question? We do. Oh. Well, actually, I think Chris can answer it. Um, well. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> well, you're, you're here. Come on up. The, the, you almost got there. Um, the, question <laughs> is, the question is whether or not Marina One in its entirety is, um, is included in the six year. No. Uh, well, okay. It, oh, Carl. We well, do we, need we you, need Carl. You're yeah. needed, Carl. Because Marina One, we've, you've broken it up into steps. Um, and you're getting money cobbled from various different places. So if you could sort of delineate how, what's going on here? Uh, Carl Treiberg, Waterfront Facilities Manager. Mr. Chair, Council Member Falcone. Uh, phase one it is $2.5 million. It's in fiscal year 10. We expect to get uh, funding loaned to us from the state uh, this May 21st. We're going up to Sacramento. That will fund four, the first four phases of the project. So we're going to do one phase each year. It's a 10-year project and 10 phases. 2.1 is going to take care of the four phases? 2.5 will take care of the first phase, which is an FY10. Mm -hmm. It was actually approved of part of the last budget, and that's right. why it wasn't included in this today. Right. Uh, the next 5.5 million takes care oh, of the first okay. four phases. That'll get us out to 2013. 5.5 5. 5 million. Yeah. So we've Next been four phases. Yes, that's correct. So through, through stage five. Through phase four. Okay. Yeah. And I have a question. Um, dredging is not included in any of this, is it? No, it isn't. All the dredging is done by the Corps of Engineers. There is one item in the six year uh, CIP, and that's West Beach dredging in 2011, I believe, for $350,000 if we need to dredge that out for. Uh, uh, some sheltered area for a small craft for sale. If there was a change in federal policy, uh, would we have to um, budget for dredging equipment, or how would we how would we do that? Uh, Mr. Chair, it's likely that we would try and get some money out of the Corps to help uh, start it up. In some of the other ports and harbors, they've paid for a dredge and then allowed the actual ports or harbors themselves to pay for the operation of it. That's what they did in Santa Cruz. We're doing everything we can to make sure that the Corps doesn't leave and stays and dredges every year. We have no indication that they plan on leaving, and uh, Congress has appropriated funds the last four years without any problems. So we're hoping yeah, I, I know that's stay. true, but um, everyone's been worried about it the whole time I've been sitting here, so I <laughs> thought I'd ask you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Chris, back to you. Um, and then finally, um, we wanted to give you the summary that, once again, um, just reflecting that the six-year CIP needs assessment was a little over $548 million with the current 2010 capital program um, anticipated to cover about $30 million of that, just under $30 million. There are a couple of projects or, or areas that are identified in the capital budget that are not uh, part of the CIP. The Motor Pool Fleet Fund uh, Replacement Program is listed for $2.2 million in fiscal year 2010, and I believe you received a memo that provided background on how the replacement schedule is put together and the evaluation of individual vehicles that go into making up that um, actual planned replacement um, approach. And then um, the RDA Capital Program is also listed an, in your um, capital budget um, as a line item for RDA um, projects that um, may be needed. And then finally, the uh, City Utility Undergrounding Program, uh, the 359000 anticipated in fiscal year 2010 that um, is earmarked or identified for supporting um, local undergrounding preparation projects. And that concludes the okay. presentation on the capital program. Do we have We're a question over here? Questions. Thank you. First a question and then I have some comments. On the last slide, the utility undergrounding, is that for neighborhood 
um, what not not the um, cliff drive. That is correct. Okay. This is intended to support the startup costs to be able to do the uh, evaluations and, and engineering necessary to create an assessment district for local neighborhood undergrounding programs and then the cost of those um, preliminary um, efforts would be carried into the assessment district right. and re repaid. And these are for ones currently in process only? And that, well, you you recently received a report on the status of the program, and we are continuing to work through the already started right. um, neighborhood programs and gain some experience with how those move forward and then go from there. But we're not starting any new um, evaluations. Right. So is this three hundred and fifty nine thousand needed? The entire amount needed for the current ones, or is there money also in there? In case someone, because that came up with the full council before, of of whether or not we want to continue putting money into something that creates angst and this, rancor yes. and everything else. <laughs> you know, we do that all by ourselves. We don't need to put money into it. You know, so <laughs> council um, member Schneider and, and uh, uh, members of the committee, this is actually the money that uh, we anticipate receiving as revenue. So it's it's okay um, a, f a fund essentially. And it's made up of the uh, one half percent of the franchise uh, agreement with SCE that's identified for the program. Okay. Um, I have a comment that I'd like to share with this committee, and then probably bring up at council because you're bringing this to council, Correct. To full council today on the streets capital program. Mm -hmm. um, first off, kudos to get the stimulus money through SBCAG and however process that worked and whatever work it was needed to make that happen. So looked like very easy on our end um, congratulations for that because that's significant that's 1.4 million that we know right now to go for typical street repair and uh, and that's not included in the, in the number you gave which was 3.3 million which is generally from our U that that's the UUT money well the streets capital but part of that also includes half of funds that come from our utility users tax so that goes to the that's streets correct. Fund. So here's something I'd like to propose here and then and then later on. Um, last November, when voters uh, voted to reauthorize Measure G for the telecommunications piece of the UUT, it was done as a general tax um, reauthorization, not a special project, meaning didn't need a two-thirds vote because it wasn't going to something specific. And so even so, the other UUT funds, the way they've been allocated by resolution with the council, has been half to the general fund and half to the streets fund. But the telecommunications piece, which is roughly $4 million, we've been doing $2 million to the general fund and $2 million into streets funds. It would seem to me that this coming fiscal year, on a one-time only basis, that it may be worth considering maybe shifting, let's say, up to a $1 million of that $2 million of the streets fund into the general fund to help offset or buffer some of the other cuts we're looking at, whether that's capital programs or staffing or whatever because we are the voters have allowed us to do that and I was thinking about that for a few months after you know when we were first hearing about the budget but really what puts the exclamation point at the end of the sentence for me is that we're getting 1.4 million in stimulus money to cover the same cost that we were already budgeting in this in in the streets fund so it, it wouldn't be taking away from the capital as I understand it wouldn't be taking away from the the infrastructure improvements for streets because we're getting outside funds on a one-time basis. So why not help ourselves with the Measure G portion, at least part of it, of um, for uh, let's say up to a million dollars to help us move over to the general fund for some of those other budget constraints that we seem to have. Um, it seems like the timing's right to me. It, you know, we don't have we could we can make a nexus if we need to on capital or other um, departments or layoffs or whatever, but. I think I think we the council should really consider looking at that as an option. And I don't know if you want to comment on that or if I, I think it's really a, a council policy decision or question. But um, certainly any feedback from staff would Mr. be appreciated. Mr. Uh, I, I I could comment from from uh, from my perspective. It clearly is a council policy decision, and I think um, we are. We stand ready to make the best use of whatever resources available for street improvements, and um, and we also fully recognize the challenges of the the current budget situation. So I think um, 
you know, the ARRA funding is a one-time funding itself. So uh, we're we're hoping to take advantage of the ability to get as far along in uh, streets capital as possible. But um, uh, we are we are very fortunate in having had both Measure G and Measure A passed, and we recognize that um, we could be having a very difficult conversation yeah. um, if either one of those measures had failed. So, Mr. Pearson, Mr. Wozniak, anybody else want to take a shot at that question? Um, you know, I just mentioned that, and I, I, I know, Councilmember Schneider, you're, you're well aware of this, which is that both the ARRA money and uh, what you're suggesting, I believe, is, you know, they're one time. And in that regard, um, you know, as long as there's a recognition of that, I certainly agree with Christine that that's a Council policy decision, and and certainly one that you know, um, you know, is, that the council can consider as part of their budget deliberations. John, you want to say anything? Yeah, I think part of the issue is it's important that the criteria for the ARA funds is that they not they not be substituted, but I think how this would be crafted and how it would be thought through mm -hmm. would be very. I think very there's intentional. certainly a way, and I understand it's it, yeah. and just like other funds, it's not to. Um, it's not to substitute things that are already there. However, the one million dollars from Measure G funds is technically there for us to use the way we see fit. Yeah. But, and the voters, uh, you know, said that last November. So, I think there's an. I think there are ways that we can legally and and um, appropriately um, look at that issue. And again, as a one time only. But I do appreciate. You know, we want to do our due diligence and make sure we won't lose that funding. From uh, SBCAG and, and the ARRA funds, but um, but I think I think it's worth looking into. Yeah, I think it just is a matter of how the steps were taken or how the deliberation and decision is is gone about. But with that um, recognition in mind, that we we do need to be mindful of how the criteria for the ARRA funds come through. Mr. Wozniak, and then uh, Ms. Falcone, any other questions? Mr. Chair, I think Councilmember Falcone, I'm sorry, um, Snyder did say it. Put in perspective, which is that the the forethought has to be given, because there is criteria with regards to the ARA funds, and, uh, and certainly we can get those that th those pieces of information together so that we can make those determinations. Ms. Falcone, I'd just like to uh, support looking into it. Um, I'm mindful and a little queasy about <clears throat> too many one-time shifts. Uh, the criteria for the stimulus money as not supplanting something else I think is important to keep in mind but we're all trying to come up with creative things to do creative ways to proceed um, I have my own sort of little uh, idea about uh, beaches and creeks and waterfronts and things but um, I think it bears looking into, so I'd like to support that. If we could get some idea about exactly what the criteria is, what the limitations are, uh, both in terms of what the stimulus uh, monies have parameters on them, but also the legalities. Um, I know we, we, it is in the general fund, and we can, we do have the option of taking some or all of that money that we did put in streets and using it for general fund. Um, I'm not sure how that would be received by the public, but I think it bears sort of looking, looking into and what would not get done. If you can't supplant the monies from the stimulus, then what are we not doing if we take money out of streets? So if you could add that piece to the equation. But let's look at all of it. Okay, um, further comments from the uh, committee? Uh, Mr. Pearson, further comments to say? No, I think we're, we're, we're done. Chris, for Thank you very much. No. Then we'll adjourn the meeting. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, everybody, you. for coming. Appreciate your help.